joining us. We'll wait one more minute as we let people in the, the room. So hang, hang tight. We're so happy that you could be here for the end of the year celebration <laughs> and to celebrate you all. So hold, hang on tight. Yeah. four of you are here and I know most of you are graduates so thank you for allowing us to honor you. My name is Soyan Bueno. I'm the director of the CU Denver Asian American Student Services that's part of CII. In the spirit of the tradition of being in solidarity with our American Indians we'd like to read a land of acknowledgement. This is a very important mission that we all want each, each uh, organization to um, honor to really acknowledge the people before us. So I want to give credit to my colleague and friend, the director of the American Indian Student Services, Gracie Resher Tyon, who wrote this land acknowledgement so that you understand a little bit about the history of the land that we reside in at Auraria campus. Acknowledging that we reside in the homelands of indigenous people is an important step in recognizing the history and the original stewards of these lands. Land, acknowledge, uh, land acknowledgements must extend far beyond words. The United States has worked hard to erase the narratives of indigenous people over time. Land acknowledgement statements can help remind us of the history, the contributions and the sacrifices native people have made. We honor and acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories and ancestral homelands of the Cheyenne, Arapaho and Ute nations. This area, Auraria campus specifically, is the confluence of the Platte and Cherry Creek Rivers, which was the epic center for trade, information sharing, and planning for the future community, family, and ally building, as well as conducting healing ceremonies for over 45 indigenous nations, including the Lakota, Kiowa, Comanche, Apache, Soshone, Paiute, Zunai, Hopi, among others. We must recognize indigenous people as the original inhabitants, stewards and relative of this land. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, remember the ties that these nations still have to their, their traditional homelands. Let us acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from, their ter from this territory and pay our respects to the diverse indigenous people still connected to this land and let us also give thanks to all the tribal na nations and the ancestors of this place. And I also want to acknowledge that Auraria campus was also the home of the Latina, Latinx community and they have been displaced for the construction of this campus. So I think it's really important to remember our forefathers that resided in, in, in Auraria campus and remember this piece of history that we are on stolen land. So thank you so much for listening to this important history and I'll hand it off to our student leaders, our council for Asian student leaders and all the student leaders that are here today so that we could celebrate the, their hard work and contributions this past year. We know it's been a difficult year with the pandemic. We haven't only battled the economic, the emotional academic struggles but as we see in, in social media and on the news, and even some of us have personally experienced the rise in anti-Asian hate. So I know it's been a difficult year, but applaud yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back for succeeding, for being resilient, for working hard and making it through. And I really want to say thank you, especially to all of you for finishing strong, because you are role models for our current students. And for all our student leaders, you've done a phenomenal job of connecting, connecting with students, um, providing a space where students can still decompress, make friends, and meet each other. So I really applaud you. So this is a celebration for all of you. And we're very honored to have some special guests tonight, some awesome performers, and some great speeches. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it off to our castle officers for hosting and organizing this event. Honey, take it away. Um, all right, I'm going to do a brief introduction. So um, CII is the Center of for Identity and Inclusion to um, support uh, underrepresented students and promote diversity 
and inclusive campus for all students, faculty, and staff. And then a part of um, the CIR, we have AASS, so which is uh, Suyan here, director of AASS, and then we are here to support the retention and success of Asian American Pacific Islander students, encourage students to become actively engaged in their learning experience, promote students' exploration of so social identity, leadership, and professional development, and provide opportunity for networking. And here we are Castle, and we're umbrella of the AAS, AASS student organizations. And we're gonna go introduce, I am the vice president, and I'm a junior. I am studying marketing and entrepreneurship, and I'll pull point it to Kathleen. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. I am Kathleen, I'm a second year at CU Denver, and I am majoring in public health and minoring in business fundamentals. And then I'll pass it on to Bomi. Hello, I'm Bomi, historian, and uh, I was majoring in architecture, but I am currently changing plans on that for now. Uh, popcorn to Kathy. Hi everyone, nice to see 83 people in the Zoom call tonight. Um, I am a senior, so I'll be graduating this May in about a week and a half, and I'll be getting my bachelor's in biology with my minor in ethnic studies, and I serve as this year's chair of CASEL. I'll popcorn over to Manharsh. Hi everyone, my name is Manharsh. I'm a first year student, and currently I serve as the treasurer for CASEL. Um, I'm majoring in computer science, and I'll pass it on to Martin. Uh, hi, I'm Martin. I'm a fourth year. I'm majoring in biobiochemistry with a double minor in uh, business fundamentals and chemistry. Um, I don't know who's left. Did Kath go yet? Not yet, but I'll, my name is <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I am the fourth year biology student with a minor in data science and psychology. I am currently the event planner of Castle. And let's see, I don't know who else I'm missing, um, but I think that, that is all. Yep, we're good. Okay, so we're going to move on, on to keynote speaker. So Manhosh, take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us again. Uh, I'll be introducing a very special guest as our keynote speaker today, CU Denver's very own Vice Chancellor for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Antonia Furious. Um, Vice Chancellor Furious is someone who takes diversity, equity, and inclusion seriously, and with over 20 years of experience educating and elevating underrepresented students and advising academic and military leaders, we are honored to have him on here today. The theme for the keynote will be rising beyond the horizons. So without further ado, Antonio Furious. Thank you. Thank you, Manharsh, for that great, uh, great introduction. It makes me feel older than I, than I usually feel, uh, but I appreciate it. I appreciate being here today. Uh, it would be great if we were in person, but this is just as good. And, and I want you, wherever you are, right, in, in the States or in the world, I want you to make some noise where you are, especially when we get our graduates out there during the performances. That's what really graduation is all about, right, is making some noise and releasing some of that energy that you've sort of been going through all these years to get to where you are. So, so good afternoon, colleagues, continuing students, prospective students, right, all those little brothers and sisters out there, cousins, nephews, nieces right, friends, family, and most of all, you, the graduates. Uh, and a big shout out also to our Anschutz graduates that I hear also from the farm department here as well, uh, who today, you all mark an incredibly important marker in, in your lives, uh, the lives of your families uh, and the generations before you, those who struggled and sacrificed so that today could happen. Um, graduations are, are times for reflection and quite honestly, also for anxiety, right? Uh, you ask those big questions like, where did the time go, right? Was it worth it, right? Do I really want to be an adult, right? And, and I, want to, I want to thank the Council on, on Asian Student Leaders and, and Asian, Asian American Study Services, Student Services, in particular, my esteemed colleague, Soyan Bueno, who's a director for Asian American Student Services, without whom all of the planning and the love that goes into today's ceremony wouldn't happen. And it's not just the ceremony, right? This is just the end point of something that's gone on all year long and years before that process. So I really wanna sort of, I want you to put your hands together wherever you are, right? And give a big, big shout out and big clap to our esteemed director for, for what she does day in and day out. 
So thank you. Thank you so much, So Young. So this year, student leaders decided on a wonderful theme, Rise Beyond the Horizon, a message of hope, resiliency, and empowerment. So what does that mean, right? What, is it, what does it mean to, to rise beyond the horizon, right? And what does hope, resiliency, and empowerment mean in 2021, in the year of a pandemic, in the year of global instability, in the year of growing anti-Asian hate, right? Not just in the United States, but globally. Right. So rising beyond the horizon really evokes this powerful, powerful image, uh, that of flight, right? And if you're nautically minded, right, more of a seagoing person, then in both cases, it's still a keen, you need a keen knowledge of, of navigation so that you understand that as storms arise, which they will, and when we've seen that this particular year, but we've seen this particularly in the AAPI community for hundreds of years here in this country, right? that when, when they hit our communities, both locally here in Colorado or nationwide, right? And they've hit extremely hard, right? With this resurgence, again, resurgence of hate, violence and murder. Um, you know, we have to sort of understand what is our base, right? And how do we navigate through this without forgetting those that have passed? So as anyone who has experienced flying or sailing will tell you going it alone is a recipe for disaster, right? Which is why mentorship matters be it from your fellow students, from staff, from faculty, community members, right? The truth be told, it's almost always a combination of all of those that get us through the, and to the finish line. So this concept of hope, right? For a generation, and I am so, so proud of this generation of students uh, for the resiliency that you've sort of created, but most of all the hope and the love, because you are embarking on the journey into a future that you refuse to allow fear to stop you. And just like the university is not the end of your educational journey, your next stop, whatever that might be, right? It might be grad school, it might be a job, it might be a job you don't like, right? It might be volunteer work or, or just taking a pause, right? It's the next launch pad that gets you to the next level, right? And you're not gonna get there alone. That, that I think if you have graduated or you're about to graduate, you understand it, that graduation, right, and community building is a team sport. This concept of resiliency, it's really powerful, right? And sometimes it gets misused. But what, it, what does it mean to be resilient in a country, right, that insists on keeping, you know, one of us, right, and us as perpetual foreigners, right? Regardless of the price paid in the toil and sacrifice of life, building the early transportation infrastructure, cultivating fields that nobody wanted, right? Dying off in foreign lands, right, in foreign wars that we didn't start, all to somehow prove that we belong, when in fact, you've always belonged. And don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. And that's where we get to empowerment, which is, which is an incredible word, right? It comes from coalition building and understanding that our struggles are interconnected. They always have been. And, and every time that people try to sort of wedge, uh, sort of, issues that keep us apart, you have to understand that our histories are always interconnected. It requires dedicated commitment to telling the truth of our histories, uh, right? The histories of exclusion, which far outweigh this new robe of inclusion that all of a sudden we're trying on in the last couple of years, right? Some would say 50 years, some say we haven't even really started. It requires a rigor in, in scholarship, which I'm so grateful for, right, for my background and my early years in, 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 in college in ethnic studies. That's where I got my chops about understanding the world. I was pretty dumb and pretty just like lost, right? In terms of like eating up propaganda about who we were and who we weren't, right? Singing songs that I learned in kindergarten, right? About 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? All these myths that get fed to us, but ethnic studies really opened my mind. And it was those classes that provided sort of a solid base for me to understand that I belong and I belong just as much as everybody else, right? And that we couldn't belong in separate silos. We needed to work together. I still remember as an undergrad, uh, and this is, this is going back quite some time, but I walked into a 400 person lecture hall. It was packed, absolutely packed to the rafters, right? And being in awe, this was my first ethnic studies class. It was an Asian American studies class and it was run by Professor Ron Takaki. And if you don't know who Ron Takaki is, you got to pick up his book, Iron Cages, which is so foundational to understanding how race 
and particularly the AAPI community form, form into that. And he introduced himself. I remember he got up on that giant stage, right? Like a rock star, which he is and it was, right? And he said, he introduced himself. He said, hi, I'm Ron Takaki and I am one badass Asian brother. And I was like, okay, I gotta listen and I gotta stay in this, in this game, right? The cold ethnic studies. So you're fortunate here at CU Denver that we have a powerful ethnic studies program that is in the process of becoming a department. But what I learned in, in Professor Takaki's class was, was more than just the history. It was really understanding that our histories are all tied together, right? And that we can't separate each other out. That without Filipino American farm workers, we would never have had the United Farm Workers Union. That the civil rights movement by, led by Cesar Chavez wouldn't have existed, right? I had Michael Omi, right? And Elaine Kim, Dr. Omi and Dr. Kim also, who were foundational to deepening my understanding of race in the United States and the critical role that Asian Americans played in the fight for our, all of our civil rights. So, so I started today by asking those questions, right? That might be popping through your head. Like, where did the time go? I, I asked myself that all the time, right? I was like, just yesterday I was 20 years old and now I'm like 55 and I have to wear glasses in order to see the world, right? And was it worth it? And do I really wanna be an adult, <laughs> which I, I think my wife asks in my, in my state all the time. And the answer to all three of those is yes, yes, and yes. So I leave you with a quote from Seneca, ancient sort of stoic philosopher who said, life is short and anxious for those that forget the past, neglect the present and fear the future. I feel really confident about the future of not just the state of Colorado, but the United States of America, and the world because we are putting it in your hands. And with you in your hands as graduates who are gonna lead us, I'm incredibly confident that we will have the hope, the resiliency and the empowerment. So thank you for allowing me a brief moment of time to, to be part of your celebration, which is our celebration. And I look forward to seeing you at some point, you're all gonna come back. And that's one thing you should know. You graduate now, but you will always be part of Lynx Nation and you will always be part of our family and you will always have a piece of our hearts with you. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. And congratulations, graduates. Thank you so much for that powerful speech, uh, Antonio. And I hope you guys can take away some of the key points um, from his speech. And right now we're gonna continue with Kathy introducing our performer, Edwin and Mevin. Hi everyone, I have the privilege of introducing our first performance of the night. It'll be actually be a live Zoom performance. And Edwina Maven, she is a graduating senior and she actually has been composing music and that's her dream and goal to continue doing so. And she has successfully been performing at our Castle ASS celebrations even pre-COVID. And so I'm really delighted to announce her tonight to perform for us one last time as it is also her last semester here at CU Denver. Edwina has a song or two for, to share tonight with us all. And so Edwina, if you'd like to introduce yourself and say hi to everyone and tell us what you're performing tonight. Cool, yeah, hey everyone. Also just a, a fair quick warning. I'm playing my guitar at my desk. So if you hear like a clonk at any point, I'm mm -hmm. fine. It's just me hitting my desk with my guitar. But um, yeah, I'm so excited that I get to still um, kind of share a song as we celebrate all our graduates. For the last two years that I've been playing this, it's been, it's been fun imagining mm -hmm. getting to that point and to actually get to play as a graduating senior this year it means a whole lot. And yeah, the song I will be sharing is called Go Tell Yesterday. Um, this is a song that I think really fits even some of the themes that Antonio was just talking about, um, ideas of learning to hold the past in a way that will propel you forward instead of try to hold you back or, I don't know, taint part of your future. So this is a song called Go Tell Yesterday. I hope you like it. Sleep the night last night. I'll 
was dreaming of my love minute I forgot to close my eyes And I saw tomorrow full of change Brand new first times But I woke up today with the sun in my face And a change of mind so I follow the way of the lights and I let them guide me through the dark. When I fell messed up to bad decisions too far, I'd use them to tell my heart that if yesterday hurt me, tomorrow's gonna heal me and I'm gonna be alright, alright, alright. Yesterday child to me, tomorrow's gonna free me, and I'm gonna be alright, alright, alright. So go tell yesterday, ooh, I, yeah. Sometimes I miss you more than I should have been. Oh, what it be like if distance didn't kill what could have been? But you always pushed me towards my dreams. I've been chasing them ever since. So I'll pack up good hope and proud of who I'm becoming. too far and use them to tell my heart and if yesterday hurt me tomorrow's gonna heal me and i'm gonna be all right all right all right if yesterday trapped me tomorrow's gonna free me and i'm gonna be all right all right all right so go tell yesterday Okay, so I want to apologize in advance if I pronounce anyone's name wrong, um, but I will go ahead and start it. I think this is the first person. Okay, so first one, we have Jillian Oviedo. Um, but, yes. uh, um, so honey, it should start with, yes. Um, give me one sec. Yep. All right. Oh, okay. hold up, uh, might be difficulties on here. Just give me one sec, don't share it quite yet, honey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hold up, 
There's a delay. I think that's the wrong one. Give me one sec. So sorry about that, everyone. Um, and I, I want to mention to the graduates, after the slideshow, if any of you would like to say some remarks to thank your parents or to, you know, your 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 people for helping you, we you have a you have you know a few seconds at um, each of you to say some remarks. And I want to acknowledge that we know for a lot of graduates, this you know this graduation just doesn't just represent your achievement. It really is a reflection of the sacrifices of your parents, your grandparents, and all the people, your family ahead of you. And so really you bring, you make us proud as a part of the CU Denver family and CU Systems family, and as being an Asian American Pacific Islander. But I know that you are paving the way for your younger siblings, cousins, and for your family. So this is a tribute, not just to you, but to the family members that helped you get here and achieve. And I wanna shout out to our student um, team, Kath, Kath, for putting the slideshow together and to all of our seniors for submitting your photo, filling out the information. Cause I think the words that you share in terms of your best memories, your words of uh, uh, advice will really help the current students here. So take it away. Give it a second. All right, I hope this is the right order. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and. It's uh, it's you have to make it smaller. Okay. Um, okay, are you guys able to see it now? <laughs> it's only, it, it's, you have to maybe minimize it because it's uh, cutting off part of it. Really? Yeah. Well, mine shows it in full screen. Yeah. Does it? Okay, it's maybe yeah. just me. Go oh, ahead along, Kath, yeah. All right, uh, I'm just gonna go through the slides, but honey, it's gonna be done announcing the names. <laughs> okay, I see it. Sounds good. All right, we have first one. Like I said, sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Um, I'm getting started. Ellie Hodge, um, major DNP, PH, dual degree. Plans after graduation, manage public health programs in military. Next, please. All right, a hundred for a foodie. Um, the SBA information systems, plans after graduation, working full-time as a developer. Next, please. We have Alice Fermento, um, BS in music business, uh, plans after graduation, moving back to Texas to be closer to the family. Next. Okay, we have Alexa Gobrez, um, BA, in political science, uh, plans after graduation to go to law school. Next, um, Alex Koa, um, BS in biology, plans after graduation, go to Andrews Dental School. Next, please. Um, Alex Rica Monte, in BS nursing, uh, plans after graduation, and, and pass in place. And class, I think. Okay, I'm sorry. I think. Um, Alive Vang, um, BS in psychology, uh, plans after graduation, goes back on um, pro program at CU Denver. Next, please. All right, Amanda Ta on DD, which is Doctor of Dental Surgery, plans after graduation, it is time to leave my home state. I will be working at dental office, Duluth, um, Minnesota. Next, please. Uh, Amy Hong, uh, BS in biology. Plans after graduation is you do more research in a um, med school. Next, please. Next. Okay, 
Is it not next? I'm sorry. It's it is now. It is now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Amy Thompson, um, BS in mathematics, uh, plans after graduation is to work. Next, please. Okay. Angela Senetong, uh, uh, doctor of pharmacy, plans after graduation is to work at retail pharmacy. Next. Ashley Vigo, um, major in BS finance, minor in risk management, um, plans after graduation. After, I gradu uh, after graduation, I plan to find a job that truly aligns with my value that CU Denver has installed in us all. I also plan to stand against and with AAPIs that are, have been affected by serious rise of hate crimes. Next, please. Okay, Brandon Chen Simone, um, B8 in computer science, plans after graduation is to find a job. Next. Okay, Candy Chong, um, doctor of dental surgery, um, plans after graduation is to attend School of Dental Medicine. Next, please. Okay, um, Chao Pan Backlund. Uh, Dr. Pharmacy uh, plans after graduation is looking for opportunities in Colorado. Next. Christina Serka, uh, MSN Healthcare Informatics um, plans after graduation is to continue working for my organization after an uh, informatics uh, title. Next, please. Okay, Cindy Nguyen. Um, BSBA in entrepreneurship, minor in physiology, and plans after graduation is to explore several countries and open business around the world. Next, please. Crystal Kim, um, major doctor of pharmacy, plans after graduation is um, community pharmacy. Next, please. Okay, Donna Nguyen, uh, Doctor of Pharmacy. Uh, plans after graduate is, is to work in community pharmacy and travel. Next, please. Okay, David Glam, uh, BS in Management. Uh, plans after graduation is to work. Next, please. Okay, Derek Schmeling. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, Major BS BA in finance. Uh, plans after graduation is to continue to pursue a career in finance and data analytics. Next, please. Edwin and Nevin, our performer. Yes, okay. Her major is BS in recording arts, minor in computer science. Plans after graduation is to work with youth on record, continue to write and play shows around Denver. Next, please. Elizabeth Lee, uh, doctor of pharmacy, um, plans after graduation is the community pharmacist to become a community pharmacist. Next, please. Elizabeth Cole, um, doctor of pharmacy, plans after graduation is to attend residency. Next, please. Okay. Ellie Plunkett, um, master's in education, plans after graduation is to teach art. Next, please. Emily Wu, Wu. okay, I hope I did say that right. Uh, MS in epidemiology. Okay, and then plans after graduation is, I'll be continue to work for Colorado COVID-19 modeling group. Next, please. Foy Huang. Um, BS in electrical engineering, minor in computer engineering and astrophysics. Plans after graduation is to find a job and grow my skill set. Next, please. Um, Gesta Fabriento, um, BS in nursing. Plans after graduation is to work at, um, besides um, working uh, besides as the medical surgical nurse. Uh, next, please. Hana Lee, um, doctor of dental surgery, plans after graduation is 
I am excited to continue my education by completing a year advanced education and general dentistry program at AT, still School of uh, Dental Medicine next year. Next, please. Huda Hosing, Hosing um, BSBA in Information System, minor in Leadership Studies. Uh, plans after graduation is to um, attend master's program. Next, please. Uh, Husana Yasmi, um, BA in Spanish, minor in Mathematics. Plan after graduation is to attend medical school at Andrews. Next, please. Boing On Hong, uh, BS in Public Health, and plans after graduation is to go to grad school to continue her education. Next, please. Jacob Victoria, uh, MSIS, and plans after graduation is a career in cybersecurity. Next, please. Uh, Jen Romario, uh, BS in nursing, plans after graduation. My plans after graduation is to become a critical care or operating room nurse. Uh, after working at a pediatric hospital and gaining some experience, I hope to apply CRNA school. Next, please. Janice Wu, um, BA in Communications, Ethnic Studies in minor, uh, in Photography in minor. Um, plans after graduation is to work and gain experience in PR or communications. Next, please. Um, Jia Yu, um, Major in Economics, minor in Math. Uh, plans after graduation is to work or gr um, attend graduate school, grad school. Next, please. Okay, uh, Ji Han Xia, major in BS in bioengineering, minor in business fundamentals and mathematics. Um, plans after graduation is to continue uh, apprenticeship on campus and then work in industry. Uh, next, please. Uh, Julian Oviedo, um, major in BS Biochemistry, minor in Political Science, plans after graduation is to work. Next, please. Um, John Nguyen, um, major BS in Mechanical, in mechanical Engineering, um, plans after graduation is to work. Next, please. Okay. Josephine Mumar, um, Doctor of Pharmacy, um, plans after graduation is to work, proceed with Master's of Science in Health Services Administration. Next, please. Judy Tran, our, one of our leaders, um, major BS in biology and minor in psychology. Plans after graduation is uh, to hang out with my friends and relax before attending to grad school at CU Andrews Medical School. Next, please. Justine Moray, um, BA in public health, minor in Spanish, um, plans after graduation is to travel. Next, please. Justin Wing, uh, doctor of pharmacy, plans after graduation is to become clinical pharmacist. Next, please. Kat Catherine Bittner, um, BS in Management and International Business. Um, plan after graduation is to graduate, uh, to attend graduate school at CU Denver. Next, please. Catherine Wing, one of our castle member, um, BS in Biology, minor in Data Science and Psychology. Plans after graduation is to attend CU Denver again to study BS in Computer Science on Data on data science and biomedicine. Next, please. Next, please. Kathy, Kathy. our president Kathy. of Castle, um, BS in biology, minor in ethnic studies. Um, plans after graduation is to finish her master of public health or master of environmental sciences. Can Yuan? Um, pharmacy plans after graduation graduation is to 
uh, complete residency. Next, please. Kulan Redmond, um, being in psychology, um, plans after graduation is go back to her home home country, Mongolia, to for work. Next, please. Laura Moore, uh, MA in counseling. Plans after graduation is to continue work in youth prevention and community services. Next, please. Leiba Zahid, um, BS in accounting. Uh, plans after graduation is uh, to attend four plus one master's program. Next, please. Lena Kim, uh, BA in elementary education. Plans after graduation is to work in a public school as an elementary school teacher. Next, please. Lilian Wing, um, Doctor of Pharmacy. Uh, plans after graduation is to. Next, please. Leona Mendonca, uh, Master MS in Marketing. Uh, plans after graduation is to get a job. Next, please. Lucy Briggs, uh, major in BA on uh, Geography and Environmental Science, Urban Studies and Planning, and minor in Ethnic Studies. Uh, plans after graduation is to continue working as NIS technician and pursue graduate school after a year off. Next, please. Lee Hernandez, um, BFA, and um, plans after graduation is to travel overseas and intern as a UX designer at Aero Electronics. Next, please. Okay, Martin Wing, uh, one of our castle member, um, BS Biology, minor in chemistry and business. Plan after graduation is to work in research. Next, please. Matthew Hong, um, BS in Biology, minor in leadership. Plans after graduation is to travel and do some hikes in their national parks. Uh, in the fall, he will be attending the Andrews Medical School as the DDS-1. Next, please. Uh, Mi Tan, um, Doctor of Dental Surgery. Uh, plans after graduation is to private practice. Next, please. Mimi Pham, Pham. Um, BA in criminal justice, minor in psychology. Plans after graduation is to, uh, I'm enlisting into the United States Army. Next, please. Naba Altowaji, uh, major in international studies and sociology. Plans after graduation is I'm planning to taking on about a year off to do internship and then apply to get my MSW master in social work. Nadima Safi, uh, BS in public health. Uh, plans after graduation is to attend PA school. Nanmi Chong, uh, BS in psychology, minor in biology and English writing, rhetoric and technology. Plans after graduation to participate in school of uh, psychology master's program at the University of Denver. Natalie Oda, MPH Epidemiology and Epidemiology. There we go. My bad. I've been struggling there. Uh, plans after graduation, uh, career in epide uh, Epidemiology. I'm sorry, everyone. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, next, please. Okay. Noreen Singh, uh, major in, uh, in master's degree, criminal justice. Plans after graduation, um, as of now, my plans are to continue my career as a grassroots uh, community activist in the local area while still serving in armed forces. My hope is to enter the field of equal opportunity, employment, discrimination one day, and one day run for an office. Uh, Nina Tran, BSBA marketing, um, plans after graduation, hopefully to find a full-time job in marketing. Fee Nguyen, um, B 
BS my, uh, mechanical engineering, mechanical engineering um, plans after graduation to start a career in aer aerospace. Next, please. Uh, okay, I'll try this one, hopefully. Parakriti Jaha, um, BSBA in accounting and management. Plans after graduation is to work at Plante Morin as a tech staff. Next, please. Praveen Kaur, um, BS in psychology. Uh, plans after graduation to apply to graduate school to pursue PA. Next, please. Ryan Singh, um, BS in biology. Plans after graduation is um, to attend medical school at Andrews. Next, please. Sahit Talachutla, um, BS in biology. Plans after graduation is to attend Andrews with the medical school. Next, please. Sally Situ, um, in uh, pharmacy. Plans after graduation is to become a pharmacist. Uh, Sarah Beal, I think, uh, MPH, uh, minor in global maternal and child health. Plans after graduation, hoping to work for an organization focusing on sexual and reproductive health. Next, please. Uh, Sayaka Hatayama, um, BFF, illust uh, BFA illustration, uh, minor in film and television writing. Uh, plans after graduation to find unemployment abroad. Next, please. Shamik Butt, uh, a BS in biology, minor in mathematics and political science. After plans after graduation is uh, matriculate to Yale School, School of Medicine in August. Next, please. Srimati Hari Krishnan, uh, BS in bioengineering. Plans after graduation is to work in medical device or pharmaceutical industry. Son Nguyen, uh, DDS, uh, Doctor of Dental Surgery. Plans after graduation is uh, to private practice. Um, Suti Pende, um, master's, master's in public administration. Plans after graduation is to work with nonprofit organization. Next, please. Samira Jane, um, doctor of pharmacy. Um, plans after graduation is to continue work as a pharmacist. Next, please. Ten Min Wing, uh, right, uh, pharmacy. A doctor of pharmacy plans after graduation is to work as a pharmacist at Costco while hopefully getting uh while uh, hopefully setting up a photography business with a friend. Next, please. Tan Nguyen, um, BS in English and Literature, minor in Educational Studies. Plans after graduation is to go to grad school at UCD and obtain master's degree in teaching. Tiffany. Them, um, master in textation. Plans after graduation is to travel. Chang Wing, um, doctor of pharmacy. Plans after graduation is to work to work as a graduate intern for Clean Super Pharmacy. Next, please. Uh, okay, I'll try this one. Sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Uh, T Shren, come. So, but um, bachelor's in international business, minor in criminal justice. Uh, plans after graduation is to find career using my major or expanded within the current company she works. Next, please. Tyler Nguyen, um, BS in biology. Um, plans after graduation is to take a year off, then apply to PA school. Next, please. Uh, Vasid Rajaseka, uh, Master's in Marketing. Um, plans after graduation is to work full-time. Next, please. 
that should be it. <laughs> okay. okay, awesome. Okay, congratulations to all the graduates, class of 2021. Um, next we will be, um, so Kathleen, she will be introducing. Oh wait. Kimberly. One sec. Um, actually, if any graduates want to speak right now, this would be the time to speak. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Since we had 87 of you all in here, um, we want, decided to put you all to get a chance to speak at the end. Um, so if you would like to speak and um, I guess uh, leave some words behind for the rest of the other graduates, feel free to speak right now. All right, I guess we'll go around one more time if you would like to uh, give a speech or talk. Um, we can, this is your moment. Um, anyone's welcome to have a moment here. Go. And if there's any graduate that we didn't announce, please feel free to, um, you know, introduce yourself and we can spotlight you. I know we have several CU Denver alumni that are graduating from Anschutz. Any words from our doctorate degree graduates? Amanda, Justin, Lillian, Dana? Thank you all graduates again we just want to applaud you I know it's been a difficult year and we wanted to just do a virtual celebration to honor you we will have in person on campus next year in December, and we want to invite you all back if you want to walk across stage and celebrate with the class of December 2021. And so it's open to all of you that graduated last, last May and last December and this past spring, because we know we couldn't do the traditional walk across stage to be given the stool and to have your family there to take some pictures. Um, so thank you all. And I will go ahead and hand it back to our officers if gra no graduates want to say any, any, any remarks. All right. I'll say this. Dana. Oh, thank you. This is Justin Masoyan. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's Justin. I was like, your voice is really deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I just want to say thank you to Ms. Soyan for everything that you've done for me um, since the yeah. very beginning and helping me find my place at CU Denver and then helping me move on to CU Anschutz. So I really appreciate all that you've done for me and all the student leaders. You're doing, everyone's doing a really great job, especially during the pandemic. So I just want to say thank you for everyone. Um, and we've come a long way. Yes, we have. Same here, thank you. Yeah. Right. They were one of the first castle members. So the tradition still continues seven years later. So thank you all. Anyone else? Okay. And we'll just go ahead and continue. Honey, um, group yeah. pictures, graduate okay. group photos. Oh, <laughs> so that was happening at the end. Oh, my bad. <laughs> okay, we can have. Um, so it's time to uh, take graduate um, graduate photos. So anyone who is not graduate, uh, can you please turn your camera off? And all the graduates, uh, please turn your camera on if you're comfortable. Thank you. I'll be taking the photo. So I'll give everyone like a minute or two to turn off their cameras if they're not a graduate and turn on their cameras if they are a graduate. If y'all did receive your castle stole and course from Soyan, please wear it in the photo to honor your Asian American pride and your achievements. Seeing everyone pop up. Everyone looks beautiful tonight. Okay. Is there anyone else? Janice, yay! Matthew, okay. 
we'll make the group photos quick, y'all, <laughs> so we can continue. <laughs> okay, is everyone ready? You got Jacob. There you go. Okay, everyone smile in. Three, two, one. Yay. Okay, I got it. Thank you all graduates and congrats again. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to continue. So we're going to have our second performance. Um, Kathleen Lee will be introducing that. Take it away, Kathleen. All right, I have the pleasure of introducing our second performer of the night, Kimberly Ming. Kimberly is the founder of the Mixed Gen podcast, inspired by her own experience as a multicultural Chinese and Puerto Rican woman. Her ability to relate to a human experience that involves culture and difference is a unique gift as she helps others bring their story to life. In 2018, Kimberly was nominated for a regional Emmy Award for her work as a writer and performer of the hashtag Celebrate Humanity campaign with Nine News. Kimberly's work has reached thousands of people worldwide and her collaborations include working with TEDx, CUSA Nine News, Rocky Mountain PBS, and J Love Calderon. The floor is yours, Kimberly. All right. Hi, everyone. So great to be here. I am honored to be asked to share some poetry with you. Um, in my experience, poetry is such a powerful force um, that I've used to just speak my truth and be able to share it with the world. And I hope that you can um, find some connection to some of my poetry. I'm gonna share two pieces. The first one is called Model Minority, which um, in the API um, community, oftentimes that is obviously something that is a myth that we're told. Um, and then, then the second one is um, something that I specifically wrote for you all um, and connects to just as you move along through your graduation. So. Um, and this is one that obviously I no longer feel silenced, um, but I definitely, when I wrote this and growing up, I never really felt like I had a voice or saw representation of me. So growing up, I learned that silence was the sound I was allowed to make. That invisible was the road to take. It's funny how they make certain lives seem more valuable than others. That there is even a they that I'm referring to that controlled my self-esteem, yet still not really sure who's sitting at that table, a table of decision makers and media image control. Don't even know what the table looks like, if it's round, a long rectangle made of cherry wood or maple wood, maybe even glass. I don't even know if there's a centerpiece in the middle, if there's wine for fine dine, if food consists of steak or pasta. You see, I wasn't at that table. I didn't even make it to the kitchen. I tried to cook bok choy and rice noodles and they laughed at me saying American does not look like me. They call us model minority. Do you think my silence is pretty? Is my invisible easy for you to swallow? Convinced we are everything but majority, even though we span across the world, we, you can find us anywhere. Our lives span across countries, ancient histories along the seven seas, our diversity is represented in our diverse looks. Despite we get told that we all look the same, Many don't know the weight of pain's capacity, how at times we bury it deep, don't riot, taught to be quiet, silent. Do not talk about the internal bleed, the rates of suicide because of pain locked inside, the pain we were taught to hide. I learned over time this silence is actually a form of violence, Asian American women having higher rates of self-hate. Growing up, I learned that silence was a sound I was allowed to make, that invisible was the road to take. But then, 
I turn to my sister, turn to my mothers, turn to the earth, turn to ancestors. I turn to myself, turn to books on the shelf, warrior lesson, Shanghai girls, sacred woman. I regain mental health, see clarity in who I can be finally mentally free and proud to awake to me. I learned that my voice could resonate. Self-worth was the path to take. And I am proud to awake to me. Thank you all. That's poem one. And it's so strange. I can't hear you all, but I see the little, I see the little claps and the thing. So thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Virtual performance, you know, you could do, do a shout out in the, in the chat. A lot of times in spoken word environments, you know, you hear people clapping or whatever resonates. Um, the snaps, I see some snaps in the chat. So thank you all for listening. Um, and then the last poem that I will do, as I said, this is new a new piece and it really was inspired by being asked to speak here today with you all and I was just thinking about the year of so many different things and also in relation to stop API hate and our communities and what that must feel like as students um, the world of COVID and all these moving pieces and so I, I thought of the power, the power of visualizing has been something that has helped me with my personal life whenever, um, you know, I'm either stuck in a place or in a transitional space, which you all are in as recent graduates, um, and it's visioning. And so this is called In the World That I Dream. In the world that I dream. More peace circles are funded than violent machines. In the world that I dream, I assist to facilitate the belief that each one of us share one another's humanity. In the world that I dream, our differences enhance us instead of creating calamity you see. In the world that I dream, we are rooted in our beliefs so much so it dissolves the hate in people's spirit that see difference and anger covers up the truth so much that they fear it. Fear change, fear pain, fears, fear things not ever being the same same, the same system that has not served us all, the same system karma will cause to fall, the same system that locks jaws and hearts up in concrete walls, the same system will not serve us all. So change is truth, hard to face, deny it, deny mother nature's grace. We are erupting, uprooting the weeds. There is no I and we and me and team. There is no I and me and we and me and team. And when we see that connection, let freedom ring. Because in the world that I dream, more peace circles are funded than violent machines. In the world that I dream, I assist to facilitate the belief that each one of us share one another's humanity. In the world that I dream, our differences enhance us instead of creating calamity you see. In the world that I dream, I am me, I am you, and you are me in the world that I dream. Peace, thank you all. Reflect on the world that you dream and many um, great wishes to the future to come. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Tell them about your podcast so that they can live, follow you. Yeah, cool. Um, so the podcast that I have, it's all about being mixed because as in the description or in my bio, I'm Chinese and Puerto Rican. Um, and a lot of those themes come out and I do poetry in many different communities, but the podcast is called the Mixed Gen Podcast. So it stands for Mixed Generation. I just put it in the chat because um, it's M-I-X-D. So it's mixed without the the E. Um, yeah, and that's me. And you can find me, Kimberly Ming is my, you know, Insta tag. So hit me up anytime. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I wanted to share SCU Denver, we have about 15% of our population that are of Asian descent, but quite a number of our students are actually of mixed mix. So we have, it's a growing population. So thank you for representing the diversity of our API population. And those that poetry is so powerful. And for some of you who don't know, I mean, Kimberly is well known. She has a TED talk. <laughs> she, you know, get her autograph now. So thank you so much for being here and sharing your inspirational words. Thank you for having me. Congratulations, everyone.
announcing um, the awards, student leaders award. Thank you. Maybe take Hi everyone. Oh, thank you, honey. Uh, hi everyone. I'm going to introduce a bit about myself. I'm Judy. Um, I'm the interim graduate assistant for the Asian American Student Services Society. Work for Soyeon um, at the Center for Identity and Inclusion. So so glad to be here. It's my privilege and honor to be announcing the the awardees of um, our API student leaders, along with um, officers and then. As students, a part of the Peer Connector Program, and active members who have been going to AAPI student clubs. Okay, if it's a presentation showing to everyone right now. Let's give a moment for the presentation to be pulled up. Perfect. All right, so before I, I announce the awardees, um, I have put together the slideshow of each student club that we have at CU Denver. We have um, a couple of active uh, clubs happening and I hope everyone enjoy it. It's pretty short um, and go ahead and play it. Kath, you aren't sharing your computer sound. One sec, sorry about that. You're good. There you go. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. I'll restart from the beginning. All right. Thank you for showing the slideshow. I hope everyone likes it. Um, we would like to acknowledge all these stu uh, student officers who, who organize all of these Zoom events for, for the students at CU Denver. There, there are many spectacular uh, events, um, even though we are doing this virtually, but we like to make sure that we fulfill the members' desires, have that sense of belonging, have, have fun, also have that college experience. Uh, with with our AAPI community, and it's just, it's such a success that we like to acknowledge them. And so, next slide, please. All right, as y'all may know, we have our current twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one Castle E We have Kathy Lee as the chair of Castle. Honey's in vice president, Kathleen Lay as secretary, Manhaj as treasurer, Kath as event planner, Martin as co public relations, and Bomi as historian. Let's give a round of applause to our Castle E board. We like to acknowledge them of their hard work, especially hosting this event with AAFS.
Next, we have Asian Student Association, uh, myself as president, uh, Jamie Nguyen as vice president, Emily Huen as secretary, Phi as treasurer, Matthew as internal public relations, Donna as external public relations, Eddie event planner, Brandon as a graphic designer, Kath as historian, and she as the promoter and social media specialist. A round of applause again. Awesome. Thank you, Soyan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Vietnamese Student Association, Selena as president, Martin as vice president, Angela as secretary, Kathleen or Kathleen, oh, Caitlin as treasurer, Tony as co-public relations, Teresa as co-public relations, Kathleen Huang as event coordinator, and Maya as historian. Round of applause, yay. Or you can use your reactions. Yes, or be like Stelian to cheer on. <laughs> All right, perfect. Korean Student Association, Yujin as president, Timmy as vice president, Sung Wolf as secretary, Alvin as treasurer, Rebecca as, Rebecca as public relations, Emily as full, social chair, Jasmine Kim as co-social chair, and Aaron Huang as intern. Hmong Student Association, apologies with the mispronunciation, Dana, uh, Dana Vang, internal president, Max as external president, Janice as vice president, Isaac as secretary, Lucy as treasurer, Su Yen as public relations, Cindy as event coordinator, and Foley as historian. Sibo, mm -hmm. Filipino Student Association, Joe Pinto as president, Isla as vice president. Kathy as secretary and TJ as treasurer. Yeah. <laughs> Asian American InterVarsity. We have Kath as a president, Sophie as vice president, Dana as treasurer, Lionel as a graphic designer and social media specialist. And last but not least, Yumi Park as staff advisor. Yeah. <laughs> Wushu, Wushu is the Chinese martial arts. Paul as president, Jonathan as vice president, Bomi as secretary, Brenda as treasurer, and Danny as social media specialist. Yeah. So they were the all API uh, or student organization, or student organization, that was a lot. Amazing, right? We we like to acknowledge them of all their accomplishments, dedication, and um, and their service for for doing amazing things for for their members. Okay, next please. All right, so we have active members. We normally act. We normally recognize active members in in meetings, but we also like to to announce them in our celebration as well. So for Castle, we have Grace Dunlap and Maria De Deha, Meha, Mejia. <laughs> All right, ASA, we have Fu Wei Huang and Dan Tran. Vietnamese Student Association is Aaron Huang and Irina Kim. Korean Student Association, we have Molly Dill and Yumi Park. Hmong Student Association, Ashley and Kathy. People for uh, with there's Danielle and Cameron, AAIV, Kat and Lionel, and Chinese Wushu team is Bomi and Brenda. Let's give a round of applause to all these active members. Next slide, please. All right, so in AASS, we do have the peer connected program where 
we met the peer mentors with the peer mentees who, who we all can talk to them inter interpersonally and we can also direct their path. Uh, whatever path or aspirations they may be, we could also, they could also utilize the mentors as resources. And so we like to recognize the Outstanding Peer Mentor Award. So Judy Tran, Sung An, Kathy Le, Kath Nguyen, Hani Zin, and Adrina Mabin. Peer Mentee Achievement Award, we're recognizing two Timothy Beeples, Ryan Bui, Jenny Nguyen, Rohan Nippon, Donnelly Hampton, Chris Holm, Grace Dunlap, Michelle, Brittany, and Han. Yes, class, class. So many interactive and engagement here in the chat room. All right, we like to announce our outstanding graduates and outstanding student leaders. They were nominated by, by students. And so, so surprisingly, the outstanding graduates is Judy Chan, Kathy Lee, Kath Nguyen, and Noreen. Outstanding student leaders are Selena Tran and Elise Nguyen. Yeah, and I'd like to read a couple of the remarks uh, from their nominees. Um, uh, for Selena Tran, she is the current BSA president, and we are so happy to hear that she's going to continue that role, I understand. But Selena has never failed to be a role model for students below and up above her grade. She is a great example of what hardworking full-time student leaders should be. From balancing a work-study job to full-time course coach, she knows how to manage and organize her time while leading the very successful student Vietnamese student organization. I would also like to emphasize how great of a leader Selena has been through this pandemic. One can only imagine how hard it is to keep students involved in historically commuter campus, but on top of the pandemic also. She led students to become closer during such an unknown time, and that's what a prime student leader does. So woohoo! And Selena, we have an award that we'll be mailing to you. So you should be receiving that shortly. But again, thank you so much for your service and your leadership. And I, I echo your nominees' comments. It's been really hard with this pandemic, and you've really made a difference. Uh, Elsie Wen has stood out to me as an exemplary student leader since the moment I met her a few years ago. I work with Tracy Cohn in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences handling digital communication for class with such things as social media and public relations. We put a call out for content creation student assistance a few semesters pre-pandemic. Elsie blew us away with her quick response, her professional cover letter and resume for the position. Doing PR and social media can be a difficult field because it requires agile and accurate assessment and problem solving skills. I remember trying to craft interviews and questions that would give me a sense of our potential hires aptitude and some of them were doozies. I can't remember all the questions, but I asked, but I do remember when I gave her this terrifying vague instruction, tell me a story in 30 seconds or less. Um, to the point of their exercise was to see how a potential assistant could qu quickly craft a narrative. I imagine the response that I would get from this question would range from fictional princesses and dragons to 20 seconds of solid silence. Instead, Elsie surprised me by explaining to me the complexities of family dynamics after her father suffered a fall and broke his hip. So there's more, but I think clearly um, the nominee was very impressed with your professionalism, your, your talent, and she's very involved in the ASA Student Association as well. So congratulations, Elsie, and you'll also be getting an award in the mail. Any comments from either one of you? Oh, uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Sorry, I didn't know you're going um, to say thanks to Alicia, so I didn't want to inter interrupt you. But thank you so much, So Young, for everything that you've done for us and the Asian American Student Services. Without you, this wouldn't have been possible. And thank you to everyone else also um, for all of your outstanding leadership. And I can't wait to be VSA's president next year. <laughs> Woo, 
Thank, th thank you. And I really have to give props to our Castle Ebor. They really ran the show. So thank you. And, you know, Castle is really a representation of all the great student leaders of the various clubs. So thank you all for sending representation and being involved. And so for our outstanding graduates, no surprise, Judy Tran, Kathy Lay, and Kath Wen. Um, they have been three students that I've met their first year on campus. Um, a couple of them I met at our first, uh, second year of an overnight retreat. And immediately I could tell they were energetic, really wanting to connect and make friends and learn and be, show pride in their Asian American heritage. And Judy Tran, I, I met a semester later and all three of them have been amazing leaders and went some of the most active student, um, student members, I mean, from PAL to various Asian cultural clubs. I mean, I think Kathy, you'll see her at a, every Asian cultural event. She is like the biggest cheerleader and champion for our cultural club. Judy has overcome so much in terms of the you know, personal obstacles and she is a star academically going to graduate school with a really generous scholarship, but it really is a testament to her strength and resilience and her resourcefulness. And Kathleen, she's brilliant. She is really has done a lot of introspection and changed her major from, um, you know, from looking into pre-health into data science. And I think that takes a lot of courage to re-examine what direction you want to go. But she's so smart. She probably can pursue any career she wants and be a success. But again, we have to give her credit for this amazing slideshow, for doing our event planning for Castle end of the year semester. I tell them it's like planning a wedding. <laughs> You know, you all show up, but you don't understand all the details and coordination that goes behind the scenes. So thank you to all three of them for hosting and organizing. And Noreen, um, I've heard her name. She is a prominent figure in the API community. Um, I, she's received numerous, numerous awards as an Asian American hero. And she also works for APDC and she's a community organizer. So I've known of her and I know what a phenomenal activist and community organizer she is. And so we were so honored and pleased that she's part of the CU Denver graduate program. And she was also one of the speakers for the Stop API Hate event and her story was so compelling and the research and the activism that she is doing to bring light to the discrimination and racism that is happening in the AAPI community, but also wanting to raise, uh, uh, really wanting to bring people together and be in solidarity for all of us to combat hate for all minoritized communities, not just for AAPI. So you will know her. I am sure she is going to be a public official one of these days, so know, know her name. But again, thank you, our outstanding students. Um, you really deserve this award and much more. And please be expecting a little package in the mail. All right. Um, thank you, Judy and Soyan, for announcing those awards. And congratulations, all the student leaders. Um, right now, we'll be continued to our last performance. Um, Bomi Kwon will introduce that. So Bomi, take it away. I'm excited to announce that for our last performance, the Youth of the Philippine American Society of Colorado provided a recording of an enduring traditional folk dance called uh, Tinnickling. <laughs> the dan this dance was born on the islands of Visaya several centuries ago during the Spanish colonial period. And due to the context of its origins and efforts to learn, the dance may be interpreted to represent the core characteristics of Filipinos love for fun and resilience. <laughs> Congratulations to the graduates and to our student leaders. My name is Miyako Perez, and I'm a UCD student and a member of the Philippine American Society of Colorado, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving and promoting Philippine culture and heritage through educational and cultural opportunities. Today, we are showing a recorded dance that was previously performed by the Pascal kids called Tinikling. The Tinikling is the official dance of the Philippines. It's also said to be named after the long-legged bird called the tikling in the Philippines. Someone who dances the tinikling imitates the movements, 
of a tinkling bird, hence tinkling-like, as the bird walks over the grass or dodges bamboo traps set by Filipino farmers on vast rice fields. Thank you for inviting us. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the Pascal Cultural Dancers. Looks like it's buffering. Give me a sec. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is it done, Kat? No. I I think it might be the internet. internet. We can maybe uh, share it on our YouTube channel. <laughs> so we just want to acknowledge yeah, Pasco and NAPA for their partnership with our student organizations. They've been such a valuable um, members. They've supported a number of our student e events as well as inviting our students to a number of the community events. So we're really grateful for their partnership. Um, I would, I would like to give Noreen Singh an opportunity to speak. I will, we have our three outstanding graduates that are going to be speaking later today, but I really would love for you to hear uh, from Noreen just the things that she's doing and just some parting words from her to her fellow class of 2021 graduates. Noreen, please share uh, any comments and um, words that you would like to impart to your colleagues. Yeah, uh, of course. Um, first off, I, I just wanted to say I'm really incredibly honored. Um, so thank you. Whenever I, I talk to my other friends from other universities, they're about wanting space in their communities. 
your schools. And I've just felt always so incredibly grateful that we have this space here for all of us. Uh, a lot of schools don't have that. So really taking the time to recognize that we have something really special here. Um, so even though this year was really different with the pandemic and everything, um, the connections we've made here will truly last a lifetime. Um, so thank you all for the work that you all have been doing. Um, our community here has so much power, especially on campus. And I just feel so empowered to know that there's so much work being done on campus and beyond the horizon, um, as our previous speakers have also mentioned. So to anyone here um, who, who wants to stay engaged on Asian American work, there's so many opportunities on campus and off campus. So uh, I implore you to find those opportunities. And there's so many leaders here on this call that are connected with so many different great resources. Uh, so tap into those. Um, and just know like the work will continue, but what will what will sustain it is, is the connections and the networking opportunities we have here. Um, so just wanted to give a huge shout out to Soyan, um, as well as the Castle eBoard for putting this on. Um, it takes a lot of work and I'm just so impressed with everything that's been able to be done this year and um, all the leadership opportunities that you all have been doing on campus. Um, and I look forward to staying up to date and in touch with you all moving forward too. Thank you, Noreen, and we'll definitely be inviting you back to be speaking. She did a phenomenal presentation about the hate crimes in Colorado um, for the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. So I know you are gonna go far and you're gonna continue to give back. So thank you. Thank you. So our next portion of the award is we wanna acknowledge our scholarship recipients. Um, as many of you know, a lot of us struggle, a lot of our students struggle financially and higher education is a big investment and some of us don't always have the parental financial support. So one of the things that we noticed is that a lot of our Asian American students needed more scholarship opportunities. And so through a partnership with the cross campus and the community, we were able to establish two scholarships, one called the Peggy Lore Scholarship. And I want to see, Shout out to Peggy. Peggy, say your name so we everyone can see you. Let's spotlight Peggy. Hi. <clears throat> Congratulations to everybody for a great semester. Yes. So Peggy, she is a legend at CU Denver, a mentor to many students, faculty, and staff. I mean, she's held the director of Asian American Student Service role probably the longest of, uh, of all the the longest. She was one of the original um, staff members of CII. And so um, and she, when she retired, I think maybe four years ago, she was a, uh, assistant vice chancellor of student uh, success, where she oversees TRIO, the Learning Resource Center, Veteran Student Services, and a number of other departments. And she had an impact. I know some of the students that are here, they had their parents that went to CU Denver, and they knew Peggy Lore. And she was instrumental in helping them graduate and be successful. And so in, an, in her honor and also to support our API students across campus and in the community, we raised money to create a scholarship called the Peggy Lord Leadership Scholarship. And so this year, um, every year from 2015 on, we've selected two scholarship recipients that embody um, the leadership that Peggy holds, as well as their commitment and engagement with the Asian American community and their concern for Asian American issues. So if we could show the slides, um, I would like to introduce these two students. Um, thank you. Desiree Reeves. Is is one of our scholarship recipients. And it was a, a committee on campus that selected her essay. And I'd like to maybe blow it up so we can read a little bit. Thank you. And the other student is Michelle Harmon. Um, I don't know if Michelle could join us today because uh, she had work, but Desiree, are you here? Raise your hand or clap so we can hear you. Okay, so the first one, so is there, I'm sorry, let me blow this up a bit. Um, so we'll start with Desiree. Uh, she's a Vietnamese American student. She's from Thornton and she's working on her bachelor's degree in biology, also uh, pursuing a minor in public health demo, demo, demography. 
Uh, she wants to really encourage activism and work with under underprivileged populations, especially in the medical field. And I think for like many of us, she's been impacted by COVID and she's been really hyper aware of the anti-Asian um, hate that's on the rise. And so her essay was centered around how do we, what do we do to combat the racist violence against Asians and other communities? So Desiree will receive $500 that will go towards her account for our next, uh, this coming summer or fall. And we want to again acknowledge her for her, you know, her contributions and everything that she's overcome. And um, Desiree, if you're here, uh, it's hard for me to see everyone, but again, congratulations. Our next awardee is Michelle Harmon. Um, Michelle is a sophomore at CU Denver, majoring in psychology. She's also part of the University Honors and Leadership Program. Oh, Desiree, you're here. We'll give you a moment to speak. Um, but as we talk about Michelle, I just really wanted, um, we were really moved by her essay. It was, you know, she was very vulnerable in sharing some of the obstacles that she's overcome. And she is very open about her identity, being biracial and part and being LGBTQ st student. And her interest is really focused on mental health, especially impacting uh, the, you know, the minoritized community and also the health disparities. So we're so happy to be awarding this uh, Peggy Lohr scholarship to Michelle Harmon. She is Indonesian American. She's, she was born in the US. And I think she really speaks to understanding that we all have privilege, but how do we use our privilege to amplify the needs of others and to support others. Um, so thank you, Michelle. And if you're here, send us a chat. And Desiree, could I, could you say a few more words about who you are? Uh, yeah. Um, I saw Boram Jiang. Um, I was in her class in the fall, and that really jump started me being interested in ethnic studies and activism here at CU Denver. And so since then, I have been getting involved in the multiracial biracial alliance, the diversity um, and equity areas in CU Denver, and really learning about both my identity and how to help others. So. Thank you. And I think uh, Dr. Boram um, Jong is here. Boram, shout out to you. Can you say hello so people know you and take your class? Oh, yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, let me see if I can um, pull up the video. Um, yeah. All right. Hi. Yes. Um, yeah, it's it's great to see you all and uh, congrats, Desiree. It's it was great to have you in class. And um, yeah, like I I didn't know about uh, you being awarded this uh, honor, but yeah, I'm really super happy for you. Um, so I, yeah, I, I was just like watching behind the screen because I'm having the stomach flu, but <laughs> uh, so everyone take care of yourself. Um, we, we're hearing uh, horrific news um, every day about violence. So I think it's really the time for uh, self-care and radical self-care. So I, I wish everyone the best and please be safe. And I'm, I'm here um, if you need any uh, mentorship, right? And I'm, I'm teaching a course on race and gender uh, almost every semester. So if you're interested, yeah, please, you're all welcome to my class. So um, yeah, good to see you. Thank you, thank you. So take take Dr. Boren Jung's class, Dr. Faye Corona's class, Chad Shamora's class. We have a number of talented faculty. And then Michelle, I don't know if you're here, uh, Michelle. Um, I think if Michelle had sent a message that um, she had to leave for work. But again, um, Michelle, thank you, you know, really well deserved. So um, our next awardee is the Asian Chamber of Commerce Scholarship. Um, and Fran Campbell, are you here? She is the president. Yeah, she is the president of uh, the Asian Chamber of Commerce. And we really have to credit the Asian Chamber of Commerce for, 
for fundraising and establishing the scholarship. Again, they realized that CU Denver, we have a lot of Asian American students. We have over 10% um, and, and if you count our mixed Asian um, uh, American students, it's close to 15. And because of the high population of Asian American students and the need for our students financially, they did all the fundraising and helped us establish the scholarship. So um, I will go ahead and mention it's uh, Ladia Tu who received this scholarship uh, based on uh, the ACC's selection. She's a refugee from Thailand. Uh, she's originally from Burma. And I think one of the things you'll notice is that we're getting a number of students from Burma. Um, there is a new wave of refugees from that, from that area. And she aspires to go into law uh, and be a lawyer. So um, again, congratulations. Uh, Lydia, if you're here, just put it in the chat. And then um, I'll go to the next awardee, I think Jake is here. It's a uh, Hanwoo Jake Hong. He's actually from South Korea. He's pr pursuing a master's degree in criminal justice in the School of Public Affairs, but he really wants to pursue a PhD um, in, in this field. And I think his essay was really compelling because he really wanted to focus on criminal, crimi uh, criminal justice and how there is so little research on the Asian American population. And so I wanted to give Fran a few um, minutes to say something. Um, and if for any of our awardees, if you want to say anything, you also can follow Fran. Fran, take it away. Thank you, Soyan. Um, I have to give credit to Soyan. She is, you have the best mentor in the world. And we're so proud of all of the work that she's done uh, through these past few years. And uh, thank you, Soyan, for the partnership that we have with the Asian Chamber. I also wanna say congratulations to all of the graduates and the student leaders, and also of course to Hanwoo Jake Hong and Ladia Tu. Uh, we're really, you know, when, when we were reading the essays, your essays stood out and really touched us um, for those of us in the chamber that were reading those. So we're, we're so excited to see your achievements. Um, we realize that, you know, few outside our Asian community really understand the absolute importance of a university education. You know, it's more than individual achievement. It's a collective achievement for your family and for your community. It's about our elders who endured and sacrificed so much so that your generation can succeed. It's about what you're going to reach for so that your, fa your family and community can benefit. And it really is, especially for you two, about the voices that you are going to contribute to our community. I'm really excited for that. Um, on behalf of the Asian Chamber of Commerce, we hope this is for everybody. We hope to be able to follow your achievements as you move beyond your academic accomplishments. And uh, please know that the Asian Chamber is here to support you. And you know we have the best connections, so we want really want to be the resource for you in your upcoming careers. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Awardees, would you like to say any words? Okay, Peggy, any words from you? Whoops, hold on. Um, you know, this year and uh, with all the pandemic with anti-Asian violence, there's just so much negativity. And I'm so grateful to be part of this award ceremony um, and part of your Castle and um, Asian students um, end of the year ceremony because you all give me hope. You give me hope for the future. and. And I thank you. I wish you all well. And um, and again, the future looks very bright as I see all of you in the work that you want to do. So true. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you for being here. She's been a constant supporter of all of us. So thank you so much. 
Our next award goes to the API Community Advocate Award, Edwina Maven. I'm going to have um, Kath uh, Wen um, talk a little bit more, but I just want to make some remarks about Edwina. Um, I, I think she's totally deserving of this award because I, when the whole George Floyd murder happened, she was one of the students who was out marching in the streets and she was really aware of the fight for racial justice. And because of her passion for equity and diversity and inclusion, um, we had her lead one of our social justice teachings with Faye and myself as we talk about as Asian Americans what we can do to be in solidarity with our the Black Lives Matter. So um, I, for that, I know you're so deserving of this AAPI Advocate Award and thank you for all you do. Not only are you musically talented, but you have the biggest heart and um, we're gonna miss you, but I know we'll see you on stage and listen to your music on Spotify. <laughs> so Kath, go ahead. Hey, um, so Adwina, um, we wanna award you the AAPI Community Advocate Award um, for the contributions you have given to those in the community and just being a part of it. Uh, we recognize you, we see you, uh, although you might not be active um, in terms of our student orgs on campus, we are aware of your contributions to our community and we wanted to recognize you for all you've done. Um, since we've uh, made in PAL together, I wanted to be able to recognize you for that too. Um, you're also a fellow mentor and um, also uh, one of our great performers for the past <laughs> three years. So yeah, you're well-deserving for this and this is the award we decided to give you. Uh, so Yan, you're muted. Thank you, Edwina, for the amazing performance as well. Um, did you want to say any words? You don't have to. I wasn't, I didn't want to cut anyone off. But, mm -hmm. um, just wanted to say thank you again to Soyan and Kath and Catherine and Judy. Um, I just, I wasn't expecting this. And again, I feel like just very grateful. Um, to have like accidentally kind of kind of have gotten involved with the Asian Student Association because I initially wasn't uh, reaching out here. I was more like involved with PAL and um, yeah, just so grateful for all of you and thank you. Yeah, very well to serve. Thank you. Um, our next award is an advisor appreciation award and I will, um, it's Yumi Park and Judy Tran has some remarks on why Yumi is deserving. Yeah, AASS Castle and AAIV is proud to recognize you, Yumi, for all of your leadership, your, your resource, your support, and your hardworking and initiatives for your students, especially with AAIV and your involvement in the University of Auraria. We'd like to offer you this advisor Appreciate, appreciation award just to just to give back to to you and um, it's it's also beneficial and we also like to acknowledge your significant amount of contributions to your community and we believe that your support towards students um, they they are inspired that you allow them to become leaders as well you allow them to speak in bible studies you allow them to to run the prayer time, you allow others to collaboratively plan for social outing events. And so you provided the space for, for everyone and everyone likes to have that sense of belonging. And um, yeah, and so AIV along with other, other, other clubs, we like to recognize you. And as, as you're an advisor, um, everyone thinks that you're a mentor and we also appreciate your leadership as well. So we, uh, we like to acknowledge that positive contribution. And so would you like to say anything, Yumi? I'm not sure if Yumi's on call. Oh yeah, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay, because it's- Oh, 
no, we can't. You're you're muted. Okay. I'm just on my phone, but yes. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Judy. Thank you so much, Castle and Soyeon. Um, my journey with the Asian American community here at CU started when Soyeon and Susie Lee wanted to reboot KSA. <laughs> so it's been, it's been quite a journey. So I really, um, I'm really surprised actually. And I really appreciate you just giving me a shout out here. Um, everyone in this call, uh, every community member, every student leader, every active member, um, just know that you are such an important part of our bigger community. Um, one of my biggest passions is seeing that Asian American students um, have a place to belong here. And I think that living in Colorado, we don't know what we need till we get it. And so I am so happy to see um, loads of people uh, receiving something beautiful and good from their time at CU. And yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, well-deserved, Yumi. And she's an example of an alumni that has given back and has returned um, and is a mentor and educator for our current students. So thank you, appreciate you. Our last award is for Faculty Appreciation Award for uh, Dr. Faye Coronan. I think many of you know her because we've invited her numerous times to speak at our castle events, at a number of our different uh, eight, you know, Asian cultural events, because she really is a resident ex expert in our Asian American history and contemporary issues. And she is, um, was selected as the inaugural um, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Fellow for the Chancellor. And in her, in her short time, I mean, less than a year, she has moved so much, brought visibility to the API community, has been a leader in asking for more resources and to create a program, uh, a certificate for Asian American studies, because we have the students, we, we have you. And I think it's so important for all of us to be, know our history, know the contributions, and know what we need to do to amplify and make ourselves more visible. So definitely take our class, take classes from our talented faculty that are here. So thank you, Faye, for everything you do. You're always, you always have my back, and I so appreciate you. Would you like to say any words to our wonderful students and graduates? Hi, my daughter's in the background cheering me on. Okay. First, I want to say congratulations to all the graduates. Um, and thank you, Soyan. Really, the work we, um, the work I've been able to do um, has really been in collaboration with, you know, so many other faculty, staff, you know, the, we have wonderful students that work in ethnic studies and really it's, it's a big team effort. Um, so it's, I'm really touched to be recognized, but I also want everyone to know that all the work I do is really, it's really the work of a whole team. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Faye. And now we want to spotlight our graduates, Kathy, Judy, and Kat, who are our three graduate speakers. And so take it away, student leaders, graduates. All right. <laughs> so, hello everyone. My name is Kathy. I'm a fourth year biology major and I'd like to speak on what a privilege it has been to be part of the AAPI and CU Denver AASS community. And it, it has given me all, all me and my other two best friends here, Judy and Kath, an opportunity to build our skills and knowledge by participating in various office of positions, as well as being active members of other student engaging opportunities within our past four years here. Personally, I've never found a more welcoming and supportive community these past few years. Identifying as Vietnamese American and first generation, CU Denver was able to give me a home away from home. I went my K through 12 education being one of the only, if not fewest Asian Americans or even Vietnamese Americans in my class or school. The moment I stepped foot at CU Denver and joined AAPI clubs, 
and gained resources from the Center Identity and Inclusion, I felt heard, recognized, and learned how proud to be Vietnamese American. Not only did I feel heard and found a voice at CU Denver, but I've been able to meet some incredible people along the way. Even though my journey of undergrad is coming to a close, I can always look back at the memories I've made, both good and bad, and realize I couldn't have finished my undergrad degree with the help of my closest friends here with me today, Kath, Judy, and Soyam Bueno, an amazing advisor who I've met at the first generation banquet my freshman year. I have a big list of other people to thank, but I one my one parting advice is to honestly just network with a community to look and support you at your time at CU Denver if you still are a student or even if you are a graduating senior, you still have a network here within the community and you can reach out to after you become an alumni. So I'd like to now pass the floor off to Judy. Thanks, Kathy, for, for sharing all of your accomplishments and privileges for, for the AAPI community and along with um, mentioning us, uh, that's really meaningful. Um, it is easy to feel hopeful on a day like this, but there will be dark days ahead of us. There will be days where we feel all alone and that's when hope is needed the most, no matter how buried it gets, how lost we feel. We encourage everyone to keep uh, our hopes on, to keep it alive and to keep, to believe in ourselves. Even if we had any failure experiences, there is a better way to push through these mental health and physical challenges. We know how to uh, say goodbye or we know how it feels to say goodbye, uh, but we carry a piece of each other into everything we do next to remind us of who we are and to know who we are meant to be. We all have bright futures and so does everyone here watching us. We generally thank those who have shaped who we are. It is a pleasure to be speaking tonight, sharing my involvement in the AASS and AAPI community, which I feel most accomplished throughout my undergraduate journey. Everyone has been an advocate and a resource resource which uh, inspires me to pass this opportunity on to people who I care about. As an Asian American and first generation student, I can express empathy and relate to some similar experiences people have pushed through. I stepped into the Center for Identity and Inclusion feeling like I need to find my sense of belonging. However, I found another community and a community accepted who I am. And that's CII. And of course, there's TRIO program too, there's PAL, there's so many other programs that, that also allowed me to feel like the same way. The feeling of home away from home truly makes me feel that I can escape and that I have freedom. I've learned so much about myself along with the people around me. I've always been very modest about what I have achieved. Thanks for those who allowed me to show my leadership and my vulnerabilities. I drafted snapshots and creations with people who made my college experience fun as it always has been. I was able to waste out my desires just like how people need that connection. What I wanted to say is do what makes you feel happy and never be afraid of accepting challenges. There's a wall around you under the clouds, but you will see a split wall for you to go through. Don't give up, be proud of who you are regardless. And I encourage everyone to acknowledge the hardships and celebrate your dedication, work ethic and success. Thank you. All right, Kath, take it over. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'll, I'll be wrapping it up for this, um, this time. Um, so despite all the turmoil and uh, discouraging obstacles we may have faced along the way, as long as we keep our heads up and look ahead, we will be able to rise up and become even better individuals than we may expect from ourselves. We all may have differing backgrounds and starting points, but every step we take is a decision we make for ourselves. Even for us three, uh, we have overcome many points in our college career where we have tempted to give up, but nonetheless, we continue to push through and get back on our feet and keep looking towards the horizon. And take every experience and memory as a moment to cherish and learn from. 
After having the privilege of getting involved in our ASS community alongside with these lovely ladies, uh, it is assuring to know that despite going off into differing paths from here on out, that we are never alone in our journeys and that is a mindset I will be taking away as I graduate from CU Denver. Uh, despite being very shy and quiet uh, coming into this school, uh, being a part of the ASS and API community has helped nurture my growth into the individu individual that I am today and by allowing me to be exposed to the heart of what it means to work with others, be with others, and help others. So for all the graduates finishing off their last semester today, never forget the accomplishments, growth, and memories that you have gained, but be sure to look forth as you travel to your next destination. Be proud of everything you have done and everything you are, and don't let anything stand in the way of what you can be. Only by then can we rise above the horizons. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Now I'd like to transition and as I am uh, the chair for Castle and I've actually stepped foot uh, as this role my sophomore year after being in love with Castle my freshman year and um, the senior Emily Nguyen was graduating and needed someone to step up. I was the one to step up and take the chair role and I've had the, uh, the uh, honors of also serving as co-chair with Judy junior year and finishing off my undergrad as chair again this year. I'd like to now announce our amazing new Castle eboard for next year that we have selected. Uh, we currently have Honey Zinn stepping up as the chair. We have my sister Kathleen as vice president. We have Manharsh returning as our treasurer. And we have four amazing new officers. We have Yaswan Zhu as our historian, Ryan Bui as secretary. Grace Dunlap, social media specialist, and Vang Nguyen as our event planner. So please give everyone a round of applause to our new exec board for the next year. Honey, if you wanted to say a few words. Yeah, I'm so excited to take over the chair position, uh, even though it's very exciting. Um, I'm kind of nervous because this is my like, I think it's like in my whole entire life being like, like the leader of the group. I've been like involved in like different clubs, but never took like the lead. I think this would, this would really challenge me in a way. So I decided to challenge myself as well and then take this position. And I'm also excited for the new officers and I am very excited to work with them and I'm just looking forward. Yeah. I, again, I want to thank our at Castle Yee Board for hosting and putting this together. And to all our graduates for your hard work, you know, just graduating, you are serving as a role model and playing it forward, so thank you. And I wanna just say that it's really fitting that we um, celebrate Asian American Heritage Month, which is, which is the month of May, uh, with this celebration and honoring. And like I said, it's been a hard year. We know it and you, and you it, it, we really wanted to take this time to celebrate you. So we know we have one more week. Some of you may have a couple more weeks longer, but really practice radical self-care um, for yourself and, um, and just really, um, you know, make us proud. We know we are so hopeful you're gonna do great things. So. Congratulations, everyone. I wish I had confetti to throw. But again, I'm so proud of you. And thank you all for being a part of this wonderful celebration. And please join us next year. We will walk on stage and make it even longer. OK, thank you. Picture time, Kathy's tradition. So we will have to keep it up. All right, I've been recording pretty much all of my events, meetings, everything and everything, especially Castle. So one last time during my undergrad, I would love to take a group photo of everyone here tonight. All 47 y'all, if you are comfortable with turning on your cameras, we'll just take a, a moment for everyone to turn on your cameras if you are comfortable and we'll take a group photo. And I'd like to thank y'all for staying. If you've been here from the start, really appreciate y'all and those that trickled in and hopped in, thank you all for joining us. Uh, love the support from everyone. I have some friends from out of state uh, visiting to support us as well. So yeah, thank you all so much for coming. Okay, I'll take two screenshots because there are two pages. Is everyone ready? Okay, let me get my snipping tool ready. Okay, everyone smile in three, two, one.
Okay, I got one, and now I need to get the second page. So keep smiling because you, you don't know if you're on the second page or not. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me, one more. Okay. Okay, everyone smile in three, two, one. And then can I have, again, if you are a graduate, can you please keep on your cameras? Take one, one ending photo of all the graduates that are here. Okay, ready graduates? In three, two, one, smile. All right, now. If you are an AAPI officer of a club, please turn on your cameras. We would like to take a photo with all of the officers, current officers, new officers for next year. Please turn on your cameras as well. All right, is everyone ready? Okay. Everyone smile in three, two, one. Yay, okay. And then Castle Eboard, one more photo with y'all. Last time, best time, right? We're on Castle Eboard. Soyon, this includes you. <laughs> okay. And one more snip. We keep track of all these screenshots later. I'll put them on a folder and share it with you, Soyon. <laughs> okay. Everyone smile in three, two, one. Okay. Yay! Thank y'all so much. I think that concludes our end of the year celebration. Thank you all so much for joining us virtually this semester. We all know we wish we would have been in person enjoying Sonos live performances and uh, just having a good time together. But congrats to everyone graduating this semester. We're almost there. We have about a week and a half and hopefully uh, those that are walking, we'll see y'all walk on the 17th, 18th. It's a live stream, so those of you who do wanna watch us walk, um, us graduates do have the chance to cross the quad this semester um, on Monday, May 17th and 18th from 9 a.m. to like noon in like 15 minute intervals and it'll be live streamed. So congrats again to all the graduates. So on behalf of Castle and AASS, thank you all so much again for coming. And I hope everyone the best rest of the night, best rest of the semester. Hopefully y'all will enjoy your time going back in person next semester. And of course us graduates, you know, we won't be strangers. We'll keep saying hi. Um, yeah, thank y'all so much. I don't know if Soya, if you want to end on closing words. I, we're going to miss you, Kathy, and the e-board. You've done a fantastic job. And again, my heart and you know, gratitude go to all the student leaders for what you've done in this in this time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next year in person. So come by and graduates. Um, I have, unfortunately, we're out of the 2021 sashes, but we have plenty of black and uh, black and gold cords. And I'll be in the office next week, uh, tomorrow, one to four, and then also next Wednesday, if you want to come by. So come and uh, pick up those cords. If you if you, um, yeah, if you weren't able to get a stole. So, this, but again, thank you. Great job, everyone. And congratulations. Yay. You totally deserve this milestone and applause. And thank your parents and your mentors and your support, because I know um, they all have made this journey possible. Take care, everyone. Good night. Thank you all, staff, for joining us. We have